So Paul, now that we kind of know what I roughly look like in you and the queen and even the, the lights, what, what physically causes it? Like, it's not just random stuff. There has to be something physically causing this, right? Yeah, we need an explanation for why you get this very characteristic, this continuum curve that covers all the wavelengths that goes up and goes down, and it depends on the temperature where it goes up and goes down. And it turns out this can be explained by a concept called thermal equilibrium. Okay. Now, let's imagine it's a freezing cold day, as indeed it is here in Canberra this morning, and you're cold, and I saw you want your nice warm cup of tea. Yes. Then if you're a tea or a coffee person yourself. Uh, I prefer tea. And that's right, when you especially in a nice cold morning and you hold that cup of tea, your hands get warmer. Yes, so this is a general rule of heat. If you have something hot next to something cold, the heat will go from the hot thing into the cold thing. Yep. So the tea will get cooler and cooler until you can drink it without burning your lips, and your hands will get warmer and warmer until you can feel the fingertips again. And you feel a little bit warmer when you drink it in, that's right. But if you leave it too long, your tea out, it gets too cold. They both be at the same temperature. Because it, it comes to the temperature of the room or wherever you have it set out. And that's not very nice. No. So the general rule is that whenever you have hot things next to cold things yep. and you leave them in contact long enough, the heat will seep from the hot thing into the cold thing so everything's at a uniform temperature. So that's kind of why we call it room temperature. The walls or us are, are about the same temperature yeah. roughly in the area we are at. You understand this in terms of the atomic nature of heat. I mean, heat is fast moving atoms. And if you had fast moving atoms inside your coffee cup, they're going to bang into the walls of the cup yep. and make the atoms in the cup move faster, which makes that hotter. And then once the atoms in the cup are moving faster, they'll bang into the atoms in your hand and make them move faster. So they're really creating a reaction between the, yes. uh, between the atoms moving in the hot and the cold. Yes. And it turns out the same thing can happen if you mix radiation and matter. Okay. Here we have a box. Or a square T, for instance. Yes, and we've got just a vacuum inside okay. with some radiation. And the radiation's bouncing and moving around in this box. Yes, yeah, so it'll bounce, be absorbed, re-emitted, bounce and re-absorbed. Okay. And it turns out exactly the same thermal equilibrium thing happens here. Because you can kind of think there's a temperature associated with the radiation. This is how strong the radiation is, how high energy the photons are. Because it, it has a little bit of energy, right? And it's yes. moving around. Okay. And if you leave this long enough, long enough in this case being like nanoseconds, it doesn't take very long, then the two will come into equilibrium so that the, the amount of energy in the photons will match the amount of energy in the atoms in the wall. If the at wall was hotter, then the atoms in the wall are banging and they'll bang into the photons and kick them off faster with more energy. And if on the other hand you had highly energetic like x-rays inside, mm -hmm. they would smash and warm up the wall until eventually the two will come into balance where the amount of heat going from the wall into the radiation and from the radiation into the wall is the same. So because these are moving essentially so fast and there's so many of them, you'll get this reaction but on very quick time scales. Yes, yeah, so you'll come into balance and if you then cut a, um, you get the spectrum inside. And if you were to cut a hole in the side and look in there with your spectrograph, the radiation coming out will be in perfect balance with the wall. And it will have this black body, we call it a black body spectrum, because it'll look very black when you peer in there. And we call it a black body spectrum because it's in equilibrium. It's perfectly balanced with the matter. So it's because we've had this balancing and this interaction between the, the inside and the outside that it's uh, this nice smooth or even distribution. Yeah. And in fact, you get devices which you can, if you Google black body sources, you can get buy these things which will give you a black body spectrum which you can use to calibrate your spectrometer. Okay. So I said, this is called black body radiation, and you basically get it when you have a dense, opaque object. Because when something's dense and opaque, that means the light and the matter have lots of chances to interact. Now, if it was not dense and not opaque, they wouldn't have as much chance to interact. In that case, you don't necessarily get a black body spectrum. We call it a black body because the most obvious way to make it on Earth is to have like a hole which is black, because black means it absorbs all the light and then re-radiates it. Yeah. Um, and it's a smooth continuum spectrum because it's spread over the whole range of wavelengths. Because it's balanced all of those energies, not just a, a particular pocket or one type. Yes, and then you know, if you do a second year thermodynamics course, you'll study the maths of exactly how banging f atoms and banging photons equilibrate into Which the is actually thing. really fun to actually see how the physical properties of energy and temperature actually work. That can all be worked out, but that's a bit beyond the scope of this course. But take it from us, if you do get the matter and radiation so intermingled, then this is the spectrum you come out. And the crucial thing is the peak wavelength gets shorter as the temperature gets higher, as so we as saw I earlier. Go, so as I, yep, the temperature goes up, the wavelength goes down. So a light bulb is hotter than the queen, and therefore a bit sort of shorter wavelength. And if you remember short wavelengths, the photons have more energy than long wavelengths. So an X-ray photon has more energy than a radio photon. So you get more energetic photons when you get hotter temperatures. 
And so as we get colder, we get those longer wavelengths. That's right. And so it can tell you the temperature, but does it do nothing else apart from the fact that it's dense and opaque? Yeah, I mean, it's still, I guess, something, right? If you take a, a radio telescope, for instance, and look at us, we probably won't have that much. And if you look at some other objects, you can actually tell roughly that it's emitting radio wavelengths, so then therefore it has a colder temperature. So we can finally go back to the sun from our long digression and ask what's the temperature of the sun? So here is a spectrum of the sun, and it kind of looks like a black body. It goes up and it goes down. It's spread over a whole range of wavelengths. And here are the visible light, which we can see, because we kind of know we can see the sun, because we can see the sun. But it's emitting in the infrared. Yeah, but the peak is down here about yellow, about 500 nanometers, which okay. indeed is the color the sun kind of looks like. And so we can measure from where it peaks what the temperature is, which comes out at about 5,780. It's so, under 6,000 Kelvin. So by measuring that black body where it peaks, we get a rough temperature of the sun. That's right, so just under 6,000 Kelvin, so... Much hotter than our light bulb. Yes, and you kind of imagine the sun is hot. I mean, yeah. I mean you, you can have like, lasers which can be cool but still burn you. Uh, but usually if something's <laughs> giving you lots of heat, it's hot, and so that kind of makes sense. So I, I guess one thing, though, is as we're looking, there's these little dips that come through everywhere. Yeah, so it's a bit more than just a black body going on here. Yeah. So we're going to have to talk about these dips because they turn out to be absolutely crucial. If it was just a pure black body, all we could work out was the temperature, which is interesting. It's good to know, well, bear in mind, this is the temperature of the surface of the sun. Not it could be much yet. hotter inside or colder or full Something of anything. Else. Yep. Um, but there are all these dips, and those are going to turn out to be absolutely crucial to work out what the sun is actually made out of. And we'll go on to these extra bumps and wiggles in the spectrum in the next video. Okay.